Welcome to Room Service. I'm Sarah Richardson. How do you turn a closet into a cool, refreshing spa? It's a tall order, but we meet the challenge with a mix of natural elements drawn from water as we look for stylish, clever solutions on a tight budget, indulge with a modern twist on an ancient art form, and use Mother Nature as inspiration to create treasures from the surf. We are combining the best elements of sea and sky to create a bathroom oasis, and it's only on room service. What sort of treasures do you have hiding in your attic? Well, it may not be exactly the same as what's on this third floor, which happens to be a bathroom in waiting, I would say. There's some plumbing that's been roughed in. It's been here ever since our client has had her bedroom next door. And we are gonna turn this into a really terrific third floor bathroom. We only have one bathroom downstairs, so we really need this new one. And because it's on the third floor, it'll be my bathroom. Now, it's a decent sized room. It's about six feet wide by about nine and a half feet long. And I'm going to be focusing on how to keep the budget down because that is key in this space. So here's how I see it. We've got a really cool brick wall, but unfortunately, I think I'm going to cover it over because I want to put in a shower. And instead of just putting in a clawfoot tub and then a ring around the top, the best thing to do is install a shower. We can go wall to wall here, and it only needs to be about 36 inches deep, it will create a terrific wide shower space. We can achieve this just by putting a curb across the bottom. We don't need to install glass shower doors, which tend to really drive the budget up. Instead, we'll hang one shower curtain really high, almost from the ceiling, and it'll have a really gauzy, filmy look, but it'll also be the best inexpensive solution. Is anyone else going to get to use this bathroom? Probably not. It's going to be, I'm, I'm guessing it's going to be really nice and I don't want anyone else to mess it up. Teenage girls always have lots of stuff that they want to be able to keep out on the counter. So storage is going to be a focus. Maybe we'll put some sort of shelving, I think, on this wall just inside the door. Go for a long vanity, something sleek, some sort of interesting material. Maybe it's glass, maybe it's concrete. I'm thinking about just experimenting in here and having fun. What we really want to focus on is watery colors, cool feeling, and everything we can do to make this place feel like you're in an outdoor shower every day. What if you could open your eyes each day to an azure blue sky and watch the clouds floating by? Imagine creating a room in your home that soothes the senses with the tranquility and peace of raindrops on calm water. We'll accent our spa with hits of clear, sparkling glass tiles that are as refreshing as ice as we create a sky-high bath that blurs the line between inside and out. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. Great design is about combining a whole collection of small details. It's also about finding new and innovative uses for average, everyday product. I'm down in the area that sells display fixtures for retail stores, and I have an idea for our bathroom. After I get through this tournament. So if you're thinking this looks like there's not a whole lot in this store, that's because they sell mostly things like mannequins and wig forms and hangers and tags for retail stores. But one thing I discovered when I was in this area once is that they also sell chrome curtain rods. Now these are used for hanging garments off of, but they also make fantastic shower curtain rods. In our bathroom, we're thinking about not going with an expensive glass shower door, but just hanging one shower curtain 
way up high at the ceiling. And if you're looking for a shower curtain rod, you'll normally find two options. One is the average hardware store variety, very inexpensive, but it never looks very nice. The other is a designer shower curtain rod, and they end up costing the moon. This, on the other hand, is chrome-plated uh, tubing, and it is very sturdy. It's about $2 a foot, which means that for my shower curtain rod, it'll cost me about $12. And then the flanges that come along with it are also chrome-plated, and as you can see, it just creates a nice, clean look. There's lots of innovative uses for everyday product. I challenge you to go into those stores you don't normally go into. I'm sure you'll find something you need. For example, if you had a loft or a big open space, you could use a big rolling rack like this and turn it into a room divider. You are only limited by your imagination and your creativity. So go and figure out a great use for an ordinary product. This bathroom is taking shape and it's starting to resemble a space inspired by sea and sky rather than just an empty closet like the last time you saw it. Well, our tile work has all been completed. As you can see, I've created this extra large shower stall. I've taken the tile all the way to the ceiling, which is nine feet, and I think this really puts the focus on the skylight that's up above. And as I look out it now, I see blue sky and these wispy little clouds traveling by. And I think what an incredible way to start every morning underneath this skylight, looking up to beautiful blue skies. You'll notice I put something quite interesting and unusual on the floor. These are river stones, which we have then grouted. They come on a mesh backing, and they're this incredible palette of sort of greeny blues. A little bit on the more rustic side, a little bit unusual, but so much more interesting than the traditional choices that you have for floor tiles in a shower. I think it's worth the effort to go out on a limb and do something different. It'll certainly be a conversation piece in this bathroom. As for the floor tile in the rest of the bathroom, I decided to go with an eight by eight inch square slate. And I've set it in an ashlar pattern, which means that it's like a brick pattern. So it's two tiles set side by side, and then the next tile is centered over the two tiles below, which creates an interesting pattern with all of the grout joints. Again, the slate that I've used has the same watery effect and color variations as we see in the floor here in the shower area. So we've got a whole bunch more still to do in this bathroom, but it's starting to come together. We're gonna use a vanity on this side. I've come up with an idea that's a little bit out of the ordinary yet again. I've got lights that will be installed here on either side of the mirror. We've got paint to think about. We've got some storage to introduce and this place is gonna be so watery and light and beautiful. A great place to start every day. decide what tile to use when you're renovating a bathroom. Well, there are thousands of choices and you can go as high as the sky in terms of price. However, in cases like this, budget is an issue and we have to be realistic. I had some ideas about using some really incredible watery looking tiles, but they proved to be far too expensive. So instead, I chose to go with a six by six inch white gloss tile. It was less than $2 a square foot. Now that's a deal. Then I found this glass Listello. It's a one by five inch Listello piece and it took less than $100 to put a double band running all the way around the shower, which allowed me to keep the budget in check and get the desired watery effect for our bathroom. The art of glass blowing takes on many forms, each one as individual as the artist who creates it. With fluid forms that show a modern interpretation on a traditional art form, Jeff Goodman creates a dazzling range of colorful and unique works of glass. Basically, the glass blowing process hasn't changed in about 3,000 years. We do it exactly the same way, using very similar tools. There's a few changes in terms of natural gas and safety systems and uh, computerized kilns, but the actual physical making of the pieces is, is virtually the same. We basically use a stainless steel pipe and we gather molten glass at a temperature of about 2200 degrees Fahrenheit onto the blowpipe 
and then uh, slowly blow it out to a shape that we want, and then we transfer it so that the piece can be worked on in the opening of the piece. And then that's actually where I do most of the shaping, is when the opening is available to me to adjust it. And I heat it up very hot and swing it or turn it, and that allows the piece to shape. I also use a steel table to use against the pieces. So I can stand up and, and shape the piece. But really, gravity is, is the biggest tool in a way, in that when a piece is molten and very soft, I can uh, adjust the piece in the air, and it'll just it'll twist and turn, and, and it actually creates its own shape. I guess over the years, I've developed a, a series of uh, vases that I call kind of the lima series. And it starts actually with a very a shape that's similar to a lima bean. And uh, it's, it's sort of simplified, but that's a shape that in my head I sort of start with. And then I sort of deform it, and, and um, molten glass is perfect for that because molten glass basically is a liquid. And so I can take a, a shape that's sort of a set shape and then uh, allow the heat to deform it. And then if I hold it at a certain angle, it'll, it'll twist and turn, and, and it sort of makes the shape on its own. So it's sort of like having a control of it, but at the same time um, being able to let it do whatever it wants. The colors I use, I like sort of using a muted tone so that the color is ranging through the piece. It's usually quite intense at the top and intense at the bottom, but soft in the center section, and it tends to support the form. There's certain traditional colors I really like. I love the cobalt blue. It's a very sea blue. It looks a lot like the ocean, and these are, have a bit of a sea life feel to them, sort of humanistic sea life forms, just the softness of them. And we also sandblast all our pieces which make the pieces very soft and the light very soft in them so that they're not quite as harsh. And it also, whenever there's a fold in the piece, if it's sandblasted, that softness really comes through and really shows the form more than the clear pieces. I have a bit of a sport background and it's, and it's as close as art and sport mix that I've ever seen. And I love it, it's very physical, it happens very fast. The piece is done in about 40 minutes. Um, and it's a very intense 40 minutes. You can't answer the phone, you can't, your mind has to be clear except focused on that piece. And I think that that's my, sort of my joy in the field is that it is a physical endeavor as well as an artistic endeavor. And for me, I can't find anything better. Like, it, it just, uh, it's a great way to, to make a living. But you're wondering what I'm baking here. I decided to play in the sand, silica sand, that is. And I am making uh, plaster castings of starfish. Now this is a starfish that I bought and it was quite expensive and I want to really incorporate that seaside motif into our bathroom. So I've decided to use this one starfish to create a whole collection of plaster starfish. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm using silica sand and the reason I'm using silica sand is because it's very light. I've got it here in a bucket and I've mixed it with some water so it's of a consistency that it sort of packs into your hand and that's important because otherwise silica sand is very dry. So what I've done is I've used a collection of baking pans and I've filled the pans with the silica sand. So here's what I'm doing. I'm just taking the starfish and pressing it into the sand and you sort of need to rock it around a little bit. You're trying not to move it while it's in place. it out carefully so there we go there's one and now I'll do another one here this is a great project to do with kids really simple you could have fun you could make an impression of your hand or your foot Now the next step is to mix up the plaster of Paris and I'm using a quick set plaster of Paris which is the type of thing you can find at an arts and crafts supply store and all you have to do is mix it with water. You don't have much working time once you mix this up. Now if it is too thick it won't pour into the mold very well and if it's too thin it'll just soak into the sand. Okay, so that's about the right consistency. And I am just going to pour this into my mold. And you can use your mixer just to drag it all the way to the point. Perfect. Now you don't want to move these once you've poured them. It's on to the next one. There we go. 
Now all I need to do is to let those sit, but I can show you what they look like. Are you ready? Well, once they're dry, and you wanna make sure that you don't pull them out too soon, but once they're dry, you can just lift it out and brush off all of that silica sand. Then I just use a dry paintbrush and you can brush off any extra sand. Sometimes you'll notice, depending on how neat you were when you poured it, there may be a little blip on the side that you wanna take off and smooth it out. So sometimes you can break it off with your finger. And then if you wanna smooth it down, you can just use a file and gently grind it down. Remembering not to use too much pressure. There, it's nice and smooth. Now I'm just gonna set these here to dry, and I'm amassing a collection of starfish, which is far more plentiful than any I could hope to find on the shore. Let me show you, here's my original starfish here, and then here's one that I've already finished. And as a final step, what you'll want to do is use a little bit of latex urethane and just brush it over the entire surface to protect it. It'll smooth it out. It'll give it a protective coating so that they won't get dirty or be um, disturbed at all by mildew in a bathroom, such as where I'm going to be placing them. And I'll be able to create an entire wall of beautiful Plaster of Paris starfish. The term terry cloth comes from the French word tire, which means to pull. The pile loops were traditionally hand pulled from woven cloth to make what used to be called Turkish toweling. These absorbent loops also work by brushing water off the body. The best terry cloth uses a heavier combed cotton. When it comes to buying towels, the more loops per square inch, the better. And the best part is that plush terry towels are an inexpensive way to incorporate simple luxury into every day. Next. When a client tells me that they want their bathroom to be inspired by sea and sky and to feel as refreshing as the ocean, it's not something that I take lightly. So here's my completed vision. Now it's not filled with intense shades of blues and greens as you might think. I really wanted to go for a more subtle motif and I want this to be something that our client will grow up with and grow into. We don't want this to feel too childlike or too contrived. I absolutely love the bathroom. I love everything about it, especially the glass. The counter is it's elegant, it's, it's beautiful, I love it. We had some real challenges here figuring out what to do. When we started looking at introducing a vanity, the price point always goes through the roof. And I just didn't think a pedestal would provide enough of a surface. After all, I remember being a teenage girl and I would have loved to have a place to spread out my makeup and all my hair supplies. So I decided that we needed to figure out how to bring in a vanity. What we did was we had a sheet of sandblasted glass cut out and we notched it back to account for the shallower depth by the door. And we've set it on top of a sheet of MDF, which we painted the same color as the wall, a very light sort of silvery gray green. But what about the base, you ask? Well, I was so inspired by my shopping trip and that chrome rod that I decided I wanted to incorporate that same sort of feel, slightly industrial and shiny and sparkly. So I went to an industrial hardware supplier and I made a base that has the same sort of flange top and bottom and that bolts into the underside of our countertop. And then I was even able to find these sort of flange pieces which allowed me to run one piece of that bar horizontally to create a towel bar, which is a great idea. And it also helps to disguise the plumbing for the sink, although it doesn't need much disguising because this sink is a bit of a showpiece in itself. It is again done in sandblasted glass. What an incredible watery feel that it has. As for the taps, I decided to go with chrome and I wanted something that had a really classic hotel look. And then we brought in some chrome lights with a very simple frosted glass tube 
as a shade. So it's all really, really light. We've sort of mixed some more traditional elements like the faucets with the crisper lines like what we've used here for the light fixtures. Now we've got a shower curtain. You remember I said I wanted the curtain to be extra high, so I had to have a custom liner made for this because a normal shower curtain liner is only 72 inches long. So if you're gonna go with a rod that's extra high, you either need to sew two of those liners together or make your own custom liner. We've gone with a pale, sort of creamy white linen and added a band of that same soft slate green across the bottom. When it comes to the shower, I have to show you this fabulous rain head. Just have to see this. It comes. Look at that. They said they wanted a big shower and that's what I've created. It's incredible. Now a few last touches that I have to mention. Now we just have the sound of dripping water. Uh, we have our starfish project. It turned out really well. That's our one most important sea motif. And I've hung them in a line above the toilet and one above the mirror and a couple just sitting over on the vanity. And I didn't forget about the storage. We need storage for a teenage girl. So we found this frosted glass cabinet. It was about $200. And we filled it with everything she needs to keep all of her things organized. The storage is great. There's lots of places to put all of my things, and it's, it's just great. What a vision of sea and sky. It's cool, it's refreshing, and it's a great spa-inspired space. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service. <laughs>